Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. I'm Kenny Rice. We're glad that you're with us, and I'm delighted to have this man on, one of the all-time greats. You can talk about Mount Rushmore's of certain sports. You talk about jockeys, and Lafitte Penkai Jr. is there. 9,530 wins in his career for many years was the winningest jockey of all time, still number two, even though it's been more than a decade since he last rode, and Lafitte joins us now. Lafitte, thanks for being on. Yeah, you're welcome, Kenny. Anytime. And I'm interrupting your golf game probably because word is <laughs> that you have become an excellent golfer. Yes, I've been playing golf lately, and uh, it's, uh, it's, I love it. You know, I'm glad that I discovered that I uh, could play a little bit and uh, been having a lot of fun with it. Yes. It, it, and you don't have to worry about being kicked or thrown off a horse, but I wonder <laughs> if it's as frustrating sometimes as, as when you get cut off yeah. on the rail when you hit a bad golf shot. And yes, it is. It's very frustrating. Believe me, you have, you have to you have to keep calm because believe me, you can go crazy in the golf course. And I play with friends that, uh, yeah. When we started, they were better than I am. In fact, I didn't even know how to play. And the thing is, uh, I've been playing now for about six years, and I, I've been competing with them. And uh, we play for a little money, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we argue a lot too, but uh, it's a, it's really good. It's really really good. You play you play with Gary Stevens or Mike Smith or any of those guys? No, I haven't. Well, Mike doesn't play. Gary plays, but I never play with him. I play I play with guys that that uh, they are in my around my neighbors, you know, uh -huh. and some of the guys that I know, you know. But I I play I play with jockeys, but I don't uh, uh, very seldom. Very seldom we do. Well, it's a competitive nature, isn't it? I to me, yeah. I found out that all the great athletes like you are. Uh, any other thing they try, they're going to be competitive at. Have you found yes. that with golf? Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. There is a guy that uh, we always, uh, in fact, he used to own some horses. And uh, we have a rivalry, you know, and, and we, every time we play and if he beats me, uh, he teases me. And when I beat him, I'll tease him with <laughs> kissing each other on, on the phone, you know, and send them send us messages, you know. It's really, really good. It's good, yes. Lafitte, I want to ask you now some horse stuff. Uh, what, what's your take on this year's Kentucky Derby when you're watching your son and the rest of us on NBC and watching those long 22 minutes to decide who the winner was? What were you thinking? Yes, well, uh, I tell you, it's a lot of fun to uh, watch the Kentucky Derby every year. You know, this year it was a lot of controversy. And uh, I, uh, in fact, I bet on the winner. The horse crossed the wire first. And uh, I was excited about it. You know, I make some money. And then uh, I saw the inquiry. And uh, I started looking at the uh, at the rerun and some of the tapes that, that they were showing. And uh, it really, I called a friend of mine because uh, I told, uh, uh, my friend called me. And he wasn't at the track. And he wanted me to bet, bet some money. And I told him that I liked that horse. So he bet on the horse too, you know. So... While I'm watching the rerun and 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 saw the accident, uh, I call him back and I say I I, I say I think it looks it doesn't look good. I think that horse is gonna come down and sure enough he came down, you know. And uh, it was it's kind of sad, you know, because that young kid is such a, a tremendous rider. He's gonna be one of the best. He, he is already best, one of the best riders in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, winning the Kentucky Derby, which is very hard to do, and then getting disqualified, you know, it was it was really sad to see, you know. But uh, these two are uh, they have a job to do, and uh, they they I, in my opinion, you know, if I would have been a steward, I, I would have done the same thing. Yeah, and and is it different, Lafitte, riding nowadays as compared? And I don't want to be that guy that always says, you know, baseball back then was better than baseball now, or whatever. The one one era is tougher than another. But is it a different time for jockeys now? These young riders, Saez or uh, anybody else, whoever it may be, is it a yeah. different time for them as compared to when you were coming up and there were guys like Shoemaker and McCarron and some of the greats that you were riding against all the time? Well, I tell you, the, there are some good riders right now, uh, very good riders. You know, uh, uh, some of them, they, they are great riders. And uh, But uh, to tell you the truth, when I was riding here, especially here in California, most of, most of my the people that I was riding against, my rivals, they were all Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm. You know, we were like 10 Hall of Famers riding over here. 
and they all had different, most of them had different style, you know. Uh, it was really hard because you will get a guy like Patri Valenzuela on the lead, which if you don't pay attention to him, you'll never catch him. I don't care what kind of a horse he was on. And then you get a guy like uh, Eddie De La Jose, hey, De La Jose that, yeah. if you, that if you move too quick, he will come and get you at the wire. You know, so, uh, and then McCarron, he was always in the right spot, and Gary Steven and Mike Smith and all those guys, you know, Shoemaker. And uh, and some of the other names, no name, you know, no, well, yes, Donald Pierre was a Hall of Famer, too. And uh, and they were tough, tough Friday, you know, Donald Pierce in the stretch when he got on the lead, it was very, very tough to go by. And uh, it was tough. It wasn't easy, believe me. Most of this guy... They have some credentials. They have been. Uh, they have done great some 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 of the time, and uh, and uh, it was tough. They all they were, they were all they were all great, you know. And, Competition and, was tough. Oh, it was amazing. I remember the first time yes. I came out there, and I, and I'm watching some of you guys just walk out. Oh, this is 30 years ago, and I'm walking so, yeah. watching some <laughs> of you guys just walk out. You know, in, in an average race like the third race of the day at Santa Anita. And I'm thinking, this, this is like seeing the New York Yankees yeah. in their prime, yes. you know? This is like yes. if they all came together. And, and so I wonder, yeah. growing up in Panama, your dad was a jockey? Yes, my dad my dad was a jockey, but I never, I didn't grow up with him. You know, uh -huh. he, um, yeah, he's, he, went, he went to Venezuela. He was riding in Venezuela. And uh, he uh, actually, actually, he left us. He left us in Panama, and uh, we, uh we survived with my mother. My mother got married again. And uh, the first time I saw my father, uh, I remember seeing him one time when I was about three years old. That I remember he came in the, hall, in the, in the room. And uh, the next time I saw him, I was 18 years old. I was already riding. In fact, I was coming to the United States. And uh, for, uh, for some, some I think, uh, I think I was leaving to sign my paper with Mr. Hooper, I think. And then he came to Panama. To, to ride a horse that uh, that I was supposed to ride and the guy decided to bring him because I couldn't ride the horse. Uh -huh. And uh, and that's when I met him. I was around him for about a week, a very nice man and everything, you know, but uh, but I didn't grow up with him, yes. And uh, Fred Hooper brought you to the U.S., right, about like 1966 or something like that, I think. That That's right. Yes, I came here in 1966. I came, I started riding in Chicago. Uh, I did very well, and uh, and then I went to New York. I went. I did very well in New York, even though I didn't. I didn't, uh, I didn't have any barns to to ride for over there, you know. But I got lucky riding for. I uh, got some mounts from um, uh, Frank Martin, and I won some races from him. And pretty soon, everybody was riding me, and I was winning, winning a lot of races in New York before I came to California. And and that, believe me, that helped me a lot. You know, uh, uh, been winning races in New York helped me a lot over here in California. So, uh, yes. And in New York, let's go back to New York a minute, talking with Lafitte Pinkai Jr., one of the all-time great jockeys and one of the great guys to be around. I've had the pleasure of interviewing you several times over the years. And uh, your Triple Crown race wins. What I think of, uh, obviously, swell in the 84 Derby, but I think of that back-to-back-to-back Belmonts that you teamed up with the great trainer Woody Stevens with Conquistador Cielo, Caveat, and Swell. I mean, what kind of run was that for you that you're going back to back to back in that winter circle at Belmont? Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> that was nice, you know. <laughs> and some of those years, too, you know, I finished second some of those years. Yes. I finished second, yes, with some of the horses for that. One was for Woody and the other one I can't remember. For some guy, last name was Kelly. But uh, but that was a good run, you know, and uh, got lucky to finally, after so many years, I didn't win a, a triple crown race, and then I, I won one, and then I won another one, and another one, and, and then winning the Kentucky Derby, you know, that was a winning the Kentucky Derby was a thrill for me, you know, was the the best experience that I had as a jo as a jockey, you know, I really enjoyed that a lot. Yes. Wow, with all the races you won, that Derby still is the one that matters, huh? Yes, definitely. Yes, and there were some other great races that I uh, that I uh, that I participate on. That uh, that uh, to tell you uh, when uh, a fear uh, 
uh, race against a spectacular beat in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Right. That race was a lot of pressure race for me because uh, everything was on the line. You know, uh, it was the uh, the uh, the horse for the year title. You know, and uh, and it was very very important. And um, the, the, I'm telling you, I, I have never seen so much publicity in in horse racing as at that time. It was unbelievable because it was like uh, the West against the East, you know. Right. And uh, film from the was from the from the West and uh, spectacular people from the East. And believe me, they did a <laughs> they did a big big deal. And I, I actually felt some pressure before that race, you know, and uh, uh, I ended up running a good race, really a good race, you know, that I think uh, I think it made probably the difference in the race. Yes. Oh, definitely. And, you know, I was thinking about the horses and, you know, we talked about Swell and uh, the other two winners that you had at the Belmont and then, you know, I guess like Genuine Risk, you mentioned a firm, John Henry. Yes. Do you have a horse out there that uh, a horse or two or three that – not even necessarily the best horses you ever ridden, or maybe they were, but the horses that you just really enjoyed riding. Well, I tell you, I enjoy riding Sham, even though he couldn't beat uh, um, uh, Secretaria. Yeah. But I'm, I enjoy riding that horse. That was a really, really a tough horse. He was a runner. He's probably, he's probably, you know, he's probably the best, the second best horse in history. You know, yeah. I don't think any other horses can beat him at, at three. None of the other rest of them. Even though I firm, I always say I firm is the best horse that I, uh, that I, that I, that I rode. But uh, if uh, if I feel would have run in the Kentucky Derby that year, he would have finished there. Believe me, he wouldn't have beat him. Wow. I know that. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I always felt sorry for Sham, who also had a sub-two-minute a sub two minute uh, mile-and-a-quarter Kentucky Derby because Secretary yes. has the record. People forget that what, how fast he ran and how great he ran that Derby. Yes, exactly. And believe me, he, and believe me, he was trying. He was trying to win. I, I for sure, at the head of the stretch, I, I, I for sure wasn't winning, for sure, because when I asked him, when I really asked him, boy, he really switched lead and he just took off. And I saw Secretaria beside me, beside me and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this horse was going by me. Believe me. And uh, it was just a great race for him. And uh, and he did what the trainer told me the night before. The night before, uh, Pancho Martin, the trainer, told uh -huh. me, this horse tomorrow is going to do something that no other horse in the Kentucky Derby had done before. And he was right. He also brought the track record, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other year, right? Any other yes. year. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. You have so, uh, Yeah. I mean, that, that was, that's amazing. I'm glad you brought it up. Cause I always thought that sham is going to be sadly a footnote and some people are going to forget not the diehard fans, but as time goes by, Lafitte, you know, people have a tendency to forget, and, and Sam's one of those horses that I've always yes. enjoyed, and uh, I'm glad we got to talk about him. Yes, yes, he was a really special horse, very, very special. And then, and then he brought the, the track record, too, in the, uh, in the Prickness, you know, after the review for so many years, and there was so many uh, controversy about the race, about the time and everything, and then at the end, they they find out that, yes, that they both horses brought the track record. And then, but going into the Belmont State, my horse just got hurt, you know. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people didn't realize that he got hurt, but he did get hurt in that race. And uh, I remember that um, I eased him up the last part of the race, and uh, the trainer was upset with me because he didn't, he, he didn't see me riding him hard, and I just took a hold of him. And when he came down the... Uh, to the track to talk to me he says why do you let him run the last part and i say i said i said frank i said listen he he's not lame but i'm telling you there's something wrong with him he he lost his straight his uh, his strength on the on the on the turn and he he had nothing so i thought he i thought he was bled he was bleeding but no he didn't bleed i said he's not bleeding you know so but there's something definitely wrong with him and then uh he, he walked away. He didn't say nothing to me. He was very upset. So that was on a, on a Saturday. And he called me on the Monday. 
And he apologized to me and he said, thank you for saving my horse. Yeah. That's what he said. He said uh, he he uh, he had a fracture. And I can't remember what what leg it was, but he had a fracture on his leg that ended up his, his career. And, and, you know, that just goes to show, obviously, racing against the great secretariat, but just the triple crown in general as a man who's been through it all. I mean, that, that is a strenuous t- test for a horse, probably for a yes. jockey as well, isn't it? I mean, yes. the, especially when you get to that mile and a half Belmont, because how many mile and a half dirt races are you in over the course of the year, Lafitte? And then you got to yeah. do it in the, one of the biggest stages at Belmont. Yes, yes. no, it's not that many. You know, you know, it's not that many mile and one, mile and one half race. You know, it's not that many, believe me. No. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was that was well that was a thrill for me riding sham and uh and uh you know i in fact that finishing second he, he gave me a lot of publicity <laughs> <laughs> you you got a lot for some other things too i noticed yeah. along the way i get, i still get that <laughs> I still get to sign a lot of pictures with Sean finishing second, you know, so it's been okay. Yeah. Oh, that that's great. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> right. What, what an amazing horse. Uh, who knows in any other given year, you might've had a triple crown winner if he could have stayed healthy in any other given year. Um, yes, definitely. Did, who influenced you when you first came to the States and especially when you moved to California, and like you say, you jump in and you know, there's these guys there like Bill Shoemaker. I mean, there's already some legends in the making, uh, when you were a kid, was there a jockey or two that you looked at and said, Hey, I like that style. I may try to borrow a little bit here and there. Or did you, did you just do it all on your own? Well, I tell you what, when I, when I started in Panama, I used to hear about Bill Shoemaker as the greatest rider in the United States, you know? And, uh, I came, when I came over here, uh, I came to Chicago and then I, I saw him in Chicago. He came to ride a horse called, I think his name was Forley, mm-hmm. an Argentine horse. And I got to meet him, and, and the impression that I had of, of him was, uh, this guy is so little. How can he make these horses wrong? You know, that's, <laughs> that was the first impression that I got of him. And then, uh, and then I, and then he went back to California. I went, uh, and then I went to New York. And in New York, I got to meet the uh, greatest, great writers too, like Baeza, Nicasa, Gustines, and Nacinto Vasquez and Cordero and all of them, you know, and then from then I went to, to California to, to face Shoemaker, you know, over there. And, uh, and believe me, I, I, I like the style that, uh, Angel Cordero and Jorge Velasquez, which he was a Panamanian yeah. and, and Braulio Baez I had. And I didn't bring from Panama a good style of riding. I thought I looked good over there, but we didn't have, we didn't, we didn't have uh, cameras. We didn't have no film patrol or anything right. over there. So I had to adjust to all that when I came to this country. I want my style to to look better. I want to look better on the horses. And little by little, I did. You know, it cost me, but uh, little by little, I, I did. I, I, I start to look good on the horses a lot better. And, uh, and then uh, I just kept my style throughout the years the best I could, you know. Oh. But I am my those guys. I admire most of them. Most of them, they were really, really. They all they all, they had their style, but they they were good at what they did. Uh, in the past, uh, friends of mine, uh, you know them well, obviously. Mike Smith, who I know you're good friends with. Uh, Gary Stevens, these yeah. guys telling me things that, you know, they would watch you along the way is is there a thing that a jockey if jockeys come to you a young guy and said lafitte can you tell me one or two things that i really should focus on to become a very successful jockey if not a great jockey oh. at least very good oh definitely they yes they they want to learn they ask me for tips you know and uh a lot of me a lot of me ask me for tip about eating too about uh what i do to uh, keep my weight down and things like that and I help him out the best I the best I could, you know. But uh, but yes, uh, they um, they 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 want to learn, you know. Just like like me, you know, when I was riding, even though in my oldest age, if a rider came came in town and he started winning races, I want to learn from him. I want to learn see what I can learn from him. And I always learn something, you know. You never you never know everything. You you don't know everything, you know. So I always was up to to learn, 
you know, like, uh, and then I studied the writers, you know, I'm going to mention two writers that they may, they may, they, they made me change my, my, my way of writing because, because that's the only way I could beat him. I want to beat him in their own game. You know, uh-huh. the first one who came in town was uh, a, a guy called Sandy Holly. Yeah. This guy, I have never, never saw a guy that was a room that could get more out of the room than Sandy Holly. Uh, believe me, none of them, not even Shoemaker. This guy, he didn't have to save ground. He had resources position in the outside and he would make a run. And I learned a lot of things from him, why he was doing it, in what way he was doing it. And I started doing the same thing like he did. And then I got to beat him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, uh, uh, and then the other one was uh, uh, um, uh, Patrick Valenzuela. Yeah. I'm telling you, he could be on the lead and you think you had him. You think you had him and believe me, he, you, you couldn't go by him in the stretch. So I started changing things with him. I say, if I want to be this guy, as soon as I have some horse, I'm going to, I'm going to put my horse, even if I move too soon, I'm going to put my horse in front. And I did. I started pressing him, pressing him early. And that's the only way, the only way I could, I start beating him, you know? Wow. But uh, yes, he was uh, really something else when he was on the lead. Very, very special rider on the lead. Yes. One thing I remember about you talking with the great Lafitte Pinkai Jr. over 9,500 career wins uh, is that, and and the weight obviously is crucial for a jockey. You're so heavily muscled. I don't even know you've got like four yeah. percent body fat or something. For you, it wasn't a matter of diet. It was just a matter of, of maintaining with, with as heavily muscled as you are. And some jockeys have told me they think you're still the strongest guy to ever set a saddle. <laughs> yeah, well, when I, that's when I was at my best. You know, when I was at my best, when I was really, really good, I was very strong. But believe me, there were many times when I wasn't that strong, you know, that I could, I, I needed to put some, some calories on my body because I was just losing water. Yeah, because you couldn't really muscle. afford to eat yes. much, right? I mean, it yes, wasn't a matter exactly. of gaining. I mean, you could yes. gain weight because you had so much muscle. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you know, to this day, I have never let myself go. I eat very, I eat still very, eat little. You know, I eat good things now, different things, but good things, natural things. Uh, and uh, I weigh about close to 130 pounds, you know, so... Uh, um, believe me, I if 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 some of these riders will eat what I eat right now, they lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got to ask yeah. you about your son, uh, who has been a good friend of mine. And you know, I met him. You don't remember this? I met Lafitte, your son Lafitte, with you. I yes. don't know when he was a boy out there at Santa Anita years ago. And yes. uh, I'm so happy for his success. And I know that you got to be very proud of the person he is as well as a great broadcaster. Yes, he is. I'm very proud of him. He's a good son. You know, he always been a good son, you know, and uh, yes, when he was young, when he was young, when he was younger, uh, the only thing he gave me trouble was with his car. You know, that he think, I used to think, I used to tell him that he think he was the king of the city because he thought he could park any place he wanted to. And then I start getting the tickets, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me tell you a story. Okay. So finally I, I, I got, I got a very upset with him. He was going to Hoover, Hoover school over here in uh, Glendale. Uh-huh. So I got so upset with him because I started getting the tickets and he would not tell me any, anything. And until the ticket was, uh, was overdue and I had to pay bigger fine and everything. So finally, I got so upset with him, and I said, listen, you are not driving your car anymore, and you are not going to go out, and you're going to go down in the den, because we had a nice den in that house over there, <laughs> and you're going you're gonna to study over there. You're going to study. And then you know what? Why he started doing it. He started watching my racing tapes. Yeah. That was, his, that was how he got that idea of going into uh, into into um, uh, being a commentator. Okay. And and then he told me he said one day he said he said Dad I want to be a racing commentator. I said yes good just 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 tell me know how can I help you and I will. And then he started to I don't know I you know he's been so far back I don't remember if he got a job in New York or something about about doing that you know and. Uh, 
Uri Song, he was on his own, you know. He was he was he was doing really good. Yeah. Show me some of his uh, his tape that he done, you know. And it, I I was really surprised. I tell you, I was really surprised. Yeah. Well, well he learned well. You taught him well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I I think he just he just a very smart kid. You know, yeah. he probably wasn't that smart for school, but for anything else. He's been very smart, just like me. I was, I wasn't smart in school either. <laughs> <laughs> well, so <laughs> you are, you I, are I where it counts. Him. You are where it counts. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lafitte has been great catching up with you. Do come back and be on with us again, okay? Okay, anytime, anytime. And, and best wishes with the golf game. All right. Thank you. All thank right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. you. The bye, great bye. Lafitte Pinkai Jr. Stay with us. We'll have more on the Horse Racing Show right after this.